So we welcome you tonight. This is a special, very special Canberra Declaration prayer night. We always pray Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Australian at Eastern Standard Time, Monday night, 8 p.m. and Wednesday night every night of the every every week, every week of the year almost, except a bit of a break between Christmas and New Year. But tonight we are focusing on praying for the elections. But we're also going to be hearing in a short while from Martin Isles, who's the Managing Director of the Australian Christian Lobby. And again, we welcome you, Kim and myself, and the team here at the Canberra Declaration. We honour you. We've got some very special guests who we'll be hearing from, uh, Pastor Margaret Court, Brian Pickering from the Australian Prayer Network, Jenny Hagar, a wonderful woman of prayer uh, from, um, from Adelaide, South Australia, and uh, also... Um, James Condon, Commissioner James Condon, the Chairman of the National Day of Prayer and Fasting. And uh, it's got a very exciting night tomorrow night, which we'll, Kim will make sure we tell everyone about. But uh, James, would you like to open in prayer, uh, if you would, James Condon? Yes. Father, we gather as your people in this great nation of Australia. We thank you for our inheritance. We thank you that you are our God and we are the people of this land, the great South land of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for right across the nation tonight, people gather in the best interest of praying for this nation of Australia with the forthcoming federal election. Our cry to you is, Lord, have mercy. Our cry to you is, have your way. We present our bodies as living sacrifices to you. It is our privilege to pray and to share the good news of the gospel in this, the great south land of the Holy Spirit. So as we gather tonight, we do so in your name, seeking your blessing. Thank you for everyone on the call tonight. We thank you that we are one in Christ Jesus, Christ who is all in all to us. In his mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 I might ask uh, Gloria Watkins, our uh, Indigenous uh, sister and wonderful woman of prayer from WA. And I don't know if we can get Marika then to pray from WA as well, if she's able, straight after uh, Gloria. Over to you, Gloria. Thank you, Warwick. Father, we just thank you for this time that we can come together as one in unity for your kingdom, Lord God. We ask that you touch each and every one of our hearts, Lord God, in all that we do and say tonight, Lord God, that it will pierce our hearts, Lord God. And, Father, that the love of God will come upon us, Lord God, like never before. Father, we pray for your shalom tonight, Lord God. We pray for your presence, Lord God. We pray that we open up our hearts for what is meant to be said today, Lord God, that we can hear from you and you alone, Lord God. So, mm. Father, I just surrender this amazing night together, Father, from the, from the west to the south, to the east, to the north, Lord God, that we can come together as one in unity for your kingdom. So, Lord, let your will be done here tonight as it is in heaven, Father. Lord, we ask for an opening portal tonight, Lord God, to rain down, Father, upon our nation. For, Father, this is your nation and your nation alone. So, Lord, I surrender this, this meeting unto you tonight, Father, knowing that you already have it. So I thank you for what is yet to come as we um, all be in one in you, Lord God, in your mighty and powerful name. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for such unity in our nation, Lord Jesus, unity amongst the churches in the great south land of the Holy Spirit, that you're pouring your spirit out, Lord Jesus, in this time, Father. Lord, in every state, Lord, that there be an open heaven, Lord Jesus, Lord, I thank you that you're just bringing such healing to our land, Father. Lord, through every race, every person, Lord, just such healing and such yeah. unity, Father. I thank you where there's unity, it commands a blessing. We thank you for blessing on each and every church, on each and every individual listening online tonight, Father. I thank you that you just bless them, spirit, soul and body in every area of their life. 
Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that our nation, Lord Jesus, is going higher in you, Father. We're not going backwards, but we're moving forward and taking ground in this time for you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for souls, Lord, coming into the kingdom all over this nation like never before. Father, that your people in this land, that their eyes be open to see and their ears be open to hear what you're saying, Father. I thank you that you visit our nation, Lord Jesus, in this time. Father, we thank you for a mighty move of God. We thank you for revival, Father. We thank you for unprecedented healings and miracles, Lord, that nothing is impossible for you, Father. I thank you that there's a shaking going on, Father, in this time, Father, that people's hearts are being softened, Lord. I thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that you're raising up, Lord Jesus, people that stand up for truth and righteousness in this time like never before, Father, that they be your mouthpiece, Father, that they speak your word straight from the heart of heaven. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Going to get uh, Reverend Matt Ransom, the deacon in the Catholic Church, to lead us in a prayer. Thank you so much, Matt, from Canberra, ACT. Father God, I thank you that you have gathered us from across this great nation, uh, from different de denominations, Lord, and um, from bit different perspectives with what you are saying. So, Lord, as we gather, we we join hands in the spirit. Um, across our, our great land uh, for this key time in our nation, Lord God. And we ask, Lord Jesus, even as we gather now, that uh, you would cleanse our hearts, our minds of, of anything that's not of you, anything that would cause uh, the heavens to um, be closed and prepare us for this, for this key time, Lord God. And uh, Lord, I pray as, a, as an ordained um, member of the Catholic clergy, for uh, just for a unity for our brothers and sisters and, and for a blessing from, from my denomination on this time together. We ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much uh, for all those who prayed. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you so much for everybody else. So tonight, as I said before, is a very special night. It's a prayer for the elections. It's a sharing and uh, we're also going to be having a communion service for this nation of Australia. And, um, you know, um, I know that's difficult for our Catholic brothers and sisters, but certainly if you're able to, we'd love you to join with us and even just, um, you know, just pray with us at this time. But we, we really want to pray through the cross, as Pastor Margaret says, through the cross for our nation. Well, we've got a very, very special guest um, Mark Niles, all the way from sunny Canberra, I believe. And he's got a race off shortly to go and do a media interview. He's certainly been uh, uh, certainly um, stirring up the pot down there, so to speak. And he's got news for us. So I've asked him to share a bit about from how he sees things right at the present moment from the point of view of the election situation of the, 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 the different parties, the challenges, and how best we can pray. And also I've asked him to share that needs for the ACL. The Australian, Australian Christian Lobby are doing a great job and we have to pray with them and pray for them. They've got a great team, 30 odd people right across this nation, uh, local people in each state working hard. So uh, that's one of the things, that's one of our assignments today. So over to you, Martin. God bless you. Thank you, Warwick. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, I'm a little bit all dressed up at the moment because I am going to have to duck out a little bit early. Um, because there's a, another media thing that I have to do tonight because there's been some chatter today about our uh, election campaign. Um, look, I just wanted to say, and I'll say this again at the end um, with a bit of context, but I just want to say thank you to all of those on here who pray um, to the extent that this is a movement of prayers. Um, you know, a lot of um, fairly incredible things have happened in my world in the last few years, uh, and I've always been very conscious that every time that is the case. Uh, it is actually more due to the prayers of people uh, who are supporting us uh, and also because of those, because of those that uh, we have praying for us uh, that so many of the good things that happen do happen. Um, more than any other thing, uh, I've just become more and more acutely aware of that. And I suppose that's no surprise for us. Uh, and so I wanna say thank you for praying. And I always say to people, if all you ever do is pray, uh, that is enough. Um, that is uh, the best thing that you can do. And the great thing is it's something that we can all do. Um, 
I've been asked to share this evening a little bit about um, the election. We're about to enter into that season. Uh, the Prime Minister is going to call it any time now. Uh, there's been a bit of a feverish um, speculation that he was going to call it um, tomorrow. Uh, that now looks like he's not going to call it tomorrow, but it's certainly going to be in the next uh, 10 days or so, I, I, would, I would imagine. And I think we're probably heading for a May 14 election. Uh, otherwise, it'll be the 21st or the 7th, but um, one of those three dates for sure. You know, I've been giving this election a lot of thought, uh, and I think the thoughts I'm having can inform our prayers um, and our advocacy. Um, and uh, from the last few years, um, with all the disappointments that we've had from the government um, and with so many of the challenges going on in the political arena uh, of late, um, I was thinking, what really is, is the issue here with our political parties? And if I could boil it down and use a biblical metaphor, I would have to say that the major problem we're seeing in the political parties in Canberra is that we've got the wheat and the tares growing up together. Uh, we've got wheat and tares in the government. We've got wheat and tares in Labor. A lot of people say, well, where's the wheat? Well, they're actually there. Um, Senator Kimberly Kitching tragically passed away recently. She was one of Great. them. She was a really good uh, person to work with. Um, and she, she had some, you know, she was really on the right side of most issues. Um, you know, they're there in Labor. Uh, and a particular concern of mine uh, is that um, in what has become known as the Freedom Friendly Minor Parties, for whom I have enormous sympathy, um, there are some tears. Um, there is a major candidate for one of those major parties who used to be the acting senior sergeant in the Victoria Police Equality Command which is the political headquarters for Dan Andrews Police Force. You know, it's just, uh, you sit there and go, oh, there's some issues there. There's wheat and tares everywhere. It's like the thing that characterizes the day that we're living in. Um, and of course, the problem we have is that in each context, it seems that the tares, if I can continue to use that word, are more and more empowered. Uh, and the good guys are more and more disempowered. Uh, and I think that that has a lot to do with the, uh, the way in which you have media on a certain side uh, of the issues, uh, and also the way in which you have quite a lot of a significant political campaigning capability on the far left of the political spectrum. So I'm talking about, you know, it was get up, then get up kind of disgraced themselves. And what's happened? Well, we've got this Climate 200 group. You find it's all the same people. Uh, and now they're putting up their independence and they're running these campaigns. And what happens is with all of these, um, these activist campaign groups, you end up talking to politicians and the good guys will say, if I do that, I'll have a get up campaign against me come re-election. And they're, they're afraid and they're, they're made fearful of standing up for what is right because of the incredible campaign capability and because of the pressure of the media. Uh, and of course, the bad guys... Uh, the tears, they can then take control under those circumstances and they can play games and they can do what they want and they can advance whatever agendas they like. And they are completely confident that come election campaign, there will be no consequences. Um, and they're also confident that the media won't call them out. Um, and this is the problem we have. And is now really affecting the Liberal Party. And we just saw a spectacular example of it in February of this year where you had some of these people who are running amok in the Liberal Party, who have become something of an ideological cancer within the Liberal Party, they felt empowered to, um, to sink one of the Prime Minister's main promises going into the last federal election and to cross the floor and vote with the opposition leader 90 days out from a federal election to kill off this major promise. And they are confident that there will be no consequences. Um, because of the things that I just described. Um, this is the issue we see all over the place. And I've been uh, much in thought and consideration about what to do. And it was interesting, as I was sort of praying for an answer and thinking about our activities, all of a sudden, um, the, that very event that I just described happened. Uh, you had the religious discrimination bill fall at the 11th hour. Uh, you also had a last minute attempt to smuggle in some changes to legislation that would severely undermine 
Christian schools and their ability to operate. Uh, and I thought to myself, well, maybe this is the answer. Maybe this has given us the campaign that we were scratching our heads about. Maybe it's time to actually tell the truth about the tears, to tell the truth about the people who are causing uh, all these troubles. Um, and that is certainly what ACL has decided to do. Um, we're highlighting the tears that are taking control of the government's agenda. Um, and, you know, we appreciate that uh, for a lot of people, uh, they look at that and it's a little bit uh, spooky. Uh, they sort of go, oh my goodness, um, uh, does this mean that uh, the coalition could lose, for example? And does this mean we could get something worse uh, in its place? Uh, to which I sort of say, well, that may well happen. I don't think that we're going to make the difference. Uh, I think elections are won or lost um, according to much stronger headwinds than what we're able to generate. I think we can make a difference at the edge, uh, an important difference. Um, but um, uh, the other thing is, you know, either this gets called out now while there's an opportunity, or it gets called out when. Uh, we've got to think long term. We've got to think beyond this election. We've got to think about what's going on in politics at large uh, in the fullness of time. Um, and so in order to start to change that dynamic, one of the things we've been doing is building a campaign infrastructure, is building up a very sophisticated, volunteer-driven, technology-driven campaign ability, which you would usually find exclusively on the far left of the political spectrum. Uh, and by building that campaign infrastructure, we can change the calculus of things that MPs and senators think about uh, when it comes to their election campaigns, when it comes to what they stand up for or what they don't stand up for. Um, and, you know, uh, we're very blessed. We've built up 7,700 volunteers um, and uh, we've got the technological innovation. And so we're going to give it a crack. Um, and we have uh, that particular focus, as I said, uh, on the ones that are really taking the government off course, uh, because we think we need to hold that to account. And if we don't call it out now, we'll lose the opportunity. Uh, and yes, that includes Dave Sharma, Trent Zimmerman, Bridget Archer down in Bass, Fiona Martin in Reed, uh, but also there's a couple of cross benches. You know, it's not all about the government. I said these these people are everywhere. Uh, a couple of cross benches: Rebecca Sharkey down in Mayo in South Australia, uh, and also. Um, over in, uh, uh, um, uh, um, is it uh, Warringah, uh, Zali Stegel. Um, but also at the same time, we felt it's really important to give strength to the arm of the champions in the parliament, uh, to find those people who have stood up. Uh, you know, an example of this would be uh, my senator. I live in the ACT um, and I have a senator, well, there's a senator here, uh, Senator Zed Seselja, one of the only two that the ACT gets. Uh, and he is a senator for what must surely be about the most uh, progressive, secular uh, jurisdiction in Australia. Um, and yet, Senator Seselja uh, is a man of principle. And he has been firm and strong and clear on everything from same-sex marriage to religious freedom to euthanasia. To, and he suffers the, the, the flack for that in this jurisdiction. And I think to myself, well... There is a man who's a champion of the parliament and I wouldn't vote freedom friendly minor party to knock him out. I'd rather have him in because uh, he's got the proven track record. So, you know, Zed would get my vote, but the point being um, it's important to highlight those champions and there are some, and they've not been highlighted before. They've not had the strength to their arm. They've not had some campaign outfit come along and say, we'll give you a boost. We'll give you some help. Thank you for what you do. Uh, and so we've got a list of those as well. And they are, yeah, Zed's one of them, but there's also Eric Abetz down in Tasmania because he's down on number three on the, on the Senate ticket and he may not win. So we thought we've got to give him some help. Uh, he's got to look, the two ahead of him are pretty good too, uh, but he's been a long-term champion. Um, also, um, Senator um, uh, Amanda Stoker up in Queensland. Uh, there's another case of somebody who's dropped down to third on the Senate ticket uh, and is going to really face a challenge uh, to get re-elected. And of course, the particular challenge for so many of our supporters is that she, it's got to be her or the One Nation candidate, probably, in the, to get the last spot. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, look, uh, I appreciate the freedom-friendly minor party thing, but Amanda 
is one of the good guys. We need that champion in the, if the if the government's relegated to opposition, she needs to be there as part of the rebuilding effort, um, along with Zed, along with Eric, along with others. Uh, and then in the lower house, we've got Michael Suka down in Victoria, Andrew Hasty over in WA, Vince Connolly as well in WA, um, Jason Thompson, a candidate in The Hunter in New South Wales, Terry Young up in Longwood in Queensland. Um, and also uh, we're looking at Peter Dutton as well, um, because Peter Dutton may become the opposition leader if the government loses, which uh, looks like it, you know, just on the numbers without barring miracles, um, which is always a possibility. Uh, but barring those miracles, that's, that's looking uh, pretty firm. Um, and, and he's a guy who um, has been a senior cabinet member and one of the few who long term has been pretty good. He's been pretty good. Um, and so this is the sort of thing that we're looking at doing. We're just going to be a little bit blind to the parties for a second. We're going to start looking at the wheat and the tares, calling them out. Uh, now, we can't do that for everybody because we've got limited resources and because a thin campaign is a failed campaign. We've got to focus uh, and we are going to focus. Um, and I just want to say this, though, you know, that's all well and good. Um, but I pray that if my campaign is the wrong campaign, that God thwarts it and kills it dead. <laughs> because the main thing here is that we can campaign all we like um, and we can get active and involved all we like. And all of that is so important. But I, I, I would never want to forget uh, that the command in Scripture that's given, uh, you know, a couple of times very, very distinctly in relation to governing authorities is to pray. And so, um, you know, in First Timothy 2, it says, pray for kings and all who are in authority. Uh, and it says, pray that, you know, we would have a peaceful and quiet life in all godliness. And so that therefore, through that testimony and through that peace and quiet, that we would be able to, uh, that people might come to a knowledge of the truth and be saved. And that's God's will. And uh, that's what I, that's what I pray for, uh, first and foremost. And so I sort of want to encourage us all uh, that we can be the most important part of this election campaign by praying. Um, and I would say that this is the prayer that's on my heart, which is being uh, manifested in the sort of campaigning that we're doing. Uh, and it is that the right people would be empowered in our governing authorities, in the state uh, and, and in the halls of power following this election, uh, that good people would be placed by God in the right spots. You know, I even think of the story uh, there's a story uh, in the Old Testament where uh, you meet a character in uh, Ahab's household uh, or Ahab's courts, or I forget the, it was anyway, in his, in his administration. Uh, and Ahab was a terribly evil king. But uh, this fellow Obadiah was uh, a God fearing man, you know, and he would obviously was there, placed there by God. And I just think, let's find some Obadiahs to come out the other side of this election, the right people to be in government, the right people to be in the parties to rebuild them, and the right people, even from the minor parties, who might come into the Senate, not the bad guys, the good guys, so they can set the tone. That's my prayer, that they would be empowered and that the others, the, the people who are trying to accomplish evil, who have killed off uh, religious freedom, who have gone after Christian schools and done so much more besides, uh, it's my prayer that they would be disempowered after this election, that things would change for them, uh, and it would be made an awful lot harder for them to do what they wanted to do. Um, that's my prayer. Um, and that's also uh, my update. And hopefully I pray my wisdom on the subject. Um, and that explains exactly what we're doing. So uh, Warwick, uh, I think over to you, but uh, I trust that was enlightening. Martin, that's fantastic. Uh, before you go, what can we pray for tonight? I'm gonna ask uh, Pastor Margaret Court to pray for you, particularly number one um, and, and your team. But what would you, how can we pray for the Australian Christian lobby? Um, that's a good question, Warwick. Um, I think at the moment, I mean, very grateful for prayers for the team. Um, they're a great and uh, they're a wonderful team of people, actually, quite extraordinary. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things we're navigating is um, all the, the obstacles that uh, could get in our way. Uh, you know, one of the things we expect always is that there will be troublemakers who make complaints about us to various regulators who make legal, start legal action against us just to try and just gum up the system and make life hard. You know, might try and get an injunction against our flyers and all this kind of stuff because of uh, there's all sorts of things they can do. Uh, and so those obstacles are things we're ever mindful of. Um, and... Um, uh, yeah, and, and, and just protection from not only those attackers, but also from, um, from the media who would also like to uh, find a gap in the fence and bring us down. 
Um, but I suppose most of all that the influence that we do have would be a good influence um, and that God would use it, maybe even in an unexpected way. I don't know. I find God often does that, um, that he doesn't give you exactly what you thought you were going to get. But he gives you something else. Um, and so whatever it is, I'm open, but uh, that we would be able to have a genuinely good godly impact uh, on, on what's going on here. Pastor Margaret, there's, uh, there's, he's given me quite a few things to pray for now, hasn't he? <laughs> sure have. Hi, Martin. Hi, Martin. Uh, it's an honour to pray for you. So, Father, I just thank you. I thank you for Martin. I thank you for the ACL, Father. I just thank you in this time. You give great wisdom, revelation and understanding. I thank you, Lord, that he seeks you in the secret place. I thank you give to him. To be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Father, I thank you as the media come against him. Those things that come against ACL, we put a stop to it, Father. Any curse that they're trying to bring, Father, you reverse that curse. We thank you for great favor upon them in this time. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you show them things to come. You said in Jeremiah 33, 3, call upon me and ask. And I'll show you great and mighty things, fenced in and hidden, that you know it's not. Father, I just thank you. In this time, there's a church, as we all stand together, we have such wisdom. And a seeing and a knowing in this time through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we are the great south land of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we do thank you for an open heaven in this time. It'll be different to the last election. And we just thank you in this time, Father, it'll be easier than the last election. And we give you all the glory, all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. fantastic, Pastor Margaret. I'll get you to lead us in communion a bit later, uh, if that's okay with you. And again, uh, Martin, we just applaud you. We thank God for you and your team. As you said, you've got a great team and uh, it's just a great joy to have you with us tonight. And the, the Lord bless you as you go up in, into, the, into the bear pit up there in the, in the media. <laughs> The media bear pit you're going to go into in Jesus' name. The Lord, Lord, go with you. The angels go before you, and the Holy Spirit will be with you and guide you and speak the Amen. truth, as you so uh, often declare the truth of it. So that would be great. God bless you, man. Thank you, Warwick. I really appreciate that, and thank you, Margaret. That's an honour to be prayed for. Thanks, you. Man. It's mutual, <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll probably just stay on the call a bit, but I'm going to have to go in a few minutes. So. But uh, okay, you, I'll, I'll stay as long as I can. We've got Brian Pickering from the Australian Prayer Network to share. Um, Brian, um, is there anything you'd like to share in the light of what Martin said? And also, we've got to tell everyone about your 35-day prayer initiative for the elections, which as soon as the election is called, you will announce 35 days, presuming you have those 35 days, correct? That's correct. Yes, thanks, Warwick, and uh, thank you, Martin, for uh, enlightening us with all that information. And uh, it is going to be a, a, a difficult election and one that uh, will require a lot of prayer. And it's good to see that so much prayer is being marshaled. Uh, as far as uh, we are concerned, the Australian Prayer Network, we're ready to go, ready to push the button. We need about 24 hours just to get it up on our website and so forth. But we'll be calling uh, 35 days of prayer. So if the election's on the 14th of May, we'll begin our prayer next Monday. And if it's the 21st, we'll uh, commence it the week, the Monday after. So that's five weeks of prayer, 24-7 uh, prayer. Uh, we'll have nonstop prayer going throughout that time. So um, uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, we're looking forward to many miracles occurring, uh, both at the major and the micro level. Uh, and uh, Martin has already mentioned a few of those candidates who are uh, in difficult situations for being re-elected. Uh, well, we know that God can do that, and we ask that him to, to, uh, to allow those who are righteous and uh, uh, in their thinking and who stand up for the righteousness and justice in our nation, uh, we are praying for those people to be re-elected. So, yes, it's going to be a difficult time, uh, and it's good to see so many people gathering tonight on this call. We pray there'll be thousands more who will join us for the uh, 35 days of prayer and any other initiatives that are going to be uh, taking place during this time. So uh, we've done this every election since uh, goodness knows when, 
um, and uh, we're looking forward to this one as well and just praying for God's will to be done in our nation. So um, if people would like to join with you, uh, Brian, um, how can they connect with these 35 days? Can you give us a website? Tell, tell us what they should do. Yes, they could just go to our Australian Prayer Network website, which is www.ausprayernet, auspreanet.org.au, and we'll have them up there as soon as the election, or within 24 hours of the election being uh, announced. And people who are on our network, we'll send them to them by email uh, as well. So two ways, if you're on our network, you'll get it by email. If you're not on our network, you can go to our website and take them from there. Yeah, but I'd encourage you to join the network and connect with Brian. Um, Brian's work is groundbreaking across this whole nation. And uh, again, thank you, Brian. Would you like to say a short prayer uh, for the prayers that, that, that God would multiply the prayer across the nation in Jesus name. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you give us once every three years to elect a government who will uh, govern our nation for the next three years. And Father, we're coming to that time again and we know how serious the situation is. We know how desperate we are as a nation to, to have you continue as our, as our Lord, as Lord over this nation. We ask you, Lord, to raise up the praying people of our nation. We pray that they would not feel defeated already, but they would come before you uh, with faith, knowing that you are able to perform miracles as you've done before. And we just pray that one of the miracles that will take place will be the raising up of tens or hundreds of thousands of people who will pray uh, right from the time the election's announced till the day of the election itself. And so, Father, we thank you for the faithful people who have been praying even over these last three years for this government. And we pray that others will join them specifically for the election campaign. We ask your anointing upon each one. We ask you, Father, to encourage them to speak into their lives, into their hearts, uh, and let them not grow weary uh, in praying throughout these five weeks of the election campaign. And, Lord, we just look to you to uh, answer those prayers by having your will done in the results that come forth from that election. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Brian. We honour you. And again, thank God for you and thank God for what you're doing and thank God for these 35 days of prayer. Just to let everyone know, Pastor Margaret and myself have been uh, talking for actually for, probably for a couple of months, haven't we, Pastor Margaret? Yes. Um, and we really feel that we, we're going to also launch out with the 21 days of prayer and fasting. So it'll, it'll run up to the election. And I'm also talking with um, uh, uh, a couple of wonderful people who lead 24 seven prayer. And we might end up having some 24 seven worship at, at, at bookend at beginning and the end. We just don't know yet, but uh, we, we'll keep you informed about that won't be Pastor Margaret. That's right, Warwick, we will. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've got um, Jenny Hagar all the way from South Australia. What do you want to share with us tonight, Jenny, in the light of uh, an encouragement from Martin? Yes, well, um, we thank the Lord, don't we, for, for Martin. And um, uh, some of us are called to be the Air Force. You know, we're praying and some of the ground troop uh, soldiers and, and we need both. And the work that he is doing on the ground with all his team is inspiring and it helps keep Incredible. us going as we are as we are praying we're all in it together we're bringing our different giftings into this together and um, like Brian I've been involved in praying for government for a long time uh, I think it was about 19 years ago that the Lord asked me to found the South Australia Parliamentary Prayer Network and we meet ever since then every week inside Parliament House praying and elections have come elections have gone and we're always seeking the Lord, you know, how, as we are this time, how do we pray? And one thing that I've learned over the years, this is one huge spiritual battle, praying for government, because government covers every area of society. So when you pray for government, you are stepping into a very, the enemy is contending against you because we are contending the truth that the government is on Christ's shoulder. And the enemy is trying to take that from the Lord and, and, and rule himself. And this is where these, the, the kingdoms clash. And Mark 8.15 says, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. 
And this is where we're waging war because this is the religious spirit and the political spirit. And so as we're praying, we're asking the Lord um, to, to um, prevent corrupt government systems and immoral compasses and also trying to discern what is influencing our politicians, the way um, that they're thinking. Why are they going that way? What is causing this in the spiritual realm? And I just want to quickly mention something I did mention to Warwick on a phone call, and that was during the American election, we were all praying and all around the world, all the key major prophets, prophets were saying that President Trump would be again re-elected. And one day the Lord just said to me, the next president of America will be Joe Biden. And when I shared that with a number of people, absolutely no one accepted it. There was a sense that, how could that be? You're wrong. Look, the Lord's saying all this to all the prophets. So why would the Lord say that? And why, what? And so that's what we're trying to discern from the Lord, because he allowed Joe Biden to come in. He's allowed America to be weakened. There's so much shaking going on in the nations. There's so much spiritual turbulence going on in the nations. But we know we stand on Christ, the solid rock in his glorious kingdom. And that's what we're praying in. And that's why sometimes we don't understand why we pray so much and a different outcome comes. But I feel that one of the things the Lord is saying to us all is trust him, trust the Lord, stand with the Lord, pray and trust him for the outcome and, and not, never to lose heart. So many Americans just intercessors totally lost heart and were confused and lost. Whatever happens in the future, we must remain strong and just keep trusting and believing that God is leading us uh, beyond our own understanding. So that's the main thing I wanted to share, Warwick. Would you like to pray for this to happen in Jesus' name, that we'll actually look to Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. We won't look to government or a political party yes. or even a leader, but to Jesus, okay? Amen. So, Father, we thank you that we've received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. While everything else is shaking around us, Father God, we thank you that on Christ the solid rock we stand. And, Lord, we ask you to continue to lead us, uh, to help us to know how to pray, how to discern, uh, and to decree those uh, words, those glorious uh, promises that you are um, continually giving us. Lord God, keep us strong in the faith, uh, Lord, and may we just trust you with all our hearts, just knowing that you are working out your purposes, uh, Lord God, as um, kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, your glorious kingdom is being ushered in. And for that, we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's fantastic, Jenny. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. James Condon, you're with us tonight. And uh, you've got a very big night tomorrow night, which has uh, happened to come together like this because of the elections. Anything you want to share with us and you'd like to pray to? Yeah, thanks, Warwick. Yes, tomorrow night is the launch of Australia Praise and uh, very excited. Anticipation is building for that tomorrow night. When I asked the Lord about what I could share with you this evening, he directed me to Psalm 2 and verse 8. Ask of me and I will give the nations as your inheritance. And this follows on so well with what uh, Jenny has just said. Can I just emphasize those words as we pray for the nation of Australia? Ask of me. Well, one of the other translations puts it, only ask. And I found this fascinating because I looked for a bit of understanding, a little background to Psalm 2. And think about this in the context of our praying for Australia at this time. Psalm 2 was written by King David. Questions, and he questions the nation's attempts to overthrow the Lord and his anointed king. And godless culture plots to rid themselves of divine authority. Think about that for Australia now. Attempts to overthrow the Lord and his anointed king. Godless culture plots to rid themselves of divine authority. And so my word tonight is before I pray, ask of me, ask of me. 
I believe that's what the Lord is saying to us at this time. Ask of me, only ask. And I remind you that he is the God who wants all to be saved. So what do we ask of him? As he says to us, ask of me at this time for our nation. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you this evening that you are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Our heart's desire for this nation is to see a flood of salvations right across this land of people blind eyes being opened to the wonderful truth of the gospel. Yeah. We pray against plots to rid this nation of divine authority. We pray against those who are seeking to overthrow the Lord's anointed in this nation. Ask of me, ask of me, you say to us. And so we ask this evening at this time of a federal election for righteous leaders for our nation. Yes, thank you for Mark Niles. Thank you for what he shared with us tonight. We know there are righteous people. There are good people in leadership. But bring them to higher levels of leadership in our nation at this time, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, James. And that was fantastic prayer. For those who would like, who, who don't know that it's on tomorrow night, so tomorrow night's a very special uh, event uh, coordinated by the National Day of Prayer and Fasting team to launch this very important initiative, Australia Praise. And Kim, uh, do you want to tell us about it, where they can get it? I think it's going to be in the chat. They can get a link, correct? Yeah, you have to go and register. I'll put that in the chat again right now. I've got that. I'm just going to get the cut and paste for that. And also, while we're there, there's the Anzac Day special on the 25th. Those details will also be in the chat, which is a combined meeting between Australia and New Zealand, Canberra Declaration, Gate to Pray, Pray as One New Zealand. So that's on as well. But tomorrow night's the big one uh, there, right in the chat right now. There's a Zoom link to register. You need to register. Um, and that that's really important. Uh, and is Michael Smith on at all at the moment? Or James Condon want to comment very briefly? Yeah, I'm still here. I don't know whether Michael's on or not. But um, yes, it is an exciting night. We thank God for the National Day of Prayer and Fasting commenced 11 years ago. We want to honour Warwick Marsh and Alison Marsh tomorrow night. But it's a day of new beginnings. And uh, we move forward under God with the launch of Australia Praise. We want to share tomorrow night regarding the vision, our mission, our values, our desires for the nation. Uh, thank you for reminding people to register to Kim. I think uh, I got word about 20 minutes ago to say over 700 people have registered for tonight already. So it's going to be an awesome night. Please join us tomorrow evening for the launch of Australia Praise. Thanks, Kim, for putting it in the chat. No worries, James. Bless you, my friend. Back to Warwick. Thank you again, James. And we are going to um, break into groups uh, for 15 minutes, Kim, uh, if it's okay. And then we're going to come back and we're going to share communion. I'm going to ask Pastor Margaret to uh, bring a, a short message about the importance of the cross. Uh, you know, just as Kim's getting this ready, you know, uh, James talked and prayed about the need for people to see Jesus for people to come to Christ. The fundamental reality of our situation right now is we need a God-given outpouring of the Holy Spirit where not thousands, not tens of thousands, but hundreds of thousands and millions of people will find Jesus Christ as their own personal Lord and Saviour. And churches will double and triple and quadruple in size and there'll be more churches birthed and to see a Holy Ghost revival in this nation 
to turn this nation back from darkness. That's the bottom line. That's what we're praying for. Yes, we need to pray for the elections. Yes, we need to pray for godly leaders and godly government. But more than anything else, we need a, a revival. I used to think revival was an optional extra 20 years ago. You can get the car with the, the mags or the car without the mags or the car with the sunroof or not the sunroof. But right now, the only hope for Australia is revival. It's revival or bust. So we are praying right through this time for the 35 days. I'm sure Brian will be praying for revival and certainly the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Join us uh, on nightly calls, prayer calls every night at eight o'clock as we continue to pray and intercede and you can receive a daily devotion. And we will be praying specifically for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit and for people to get a revelation of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Back to you, Kim. Wonderful. Uh, whereas we've got 15 minutes and they're going to be rooms of nine or 10. Keep your prayers under 60 seconds, powerful, short, declarative prayers, and make sure everyone in your room gets a chance to pray and then go around a second time. No introductions, no life stories, just get into it and a quick declarative prayer. Then the next person, the next one, we call that machine gun prayer and uh, you're going to nail the, uh, the kingdom of darkness and override it with the kingdom of God. Bless the Lord, and we'll see you back in 15 minutes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Welcome back, everyone. Just give it a moment. It takes a few seconds for everyone to rejoin the main meeting. And we're up to 300 and nearly there. Uh, Warwick, back to you, mate. Go straight to you. Thanks. Yeah, look, thank you so much. Normally, we have some group sharing, but tonight we're going to go straight to communion. And uh, if you haven't got some communion ready, just grab a bit of water and uh, maybe get a biscuit or something. And if you haven't got that, we'll just have what, they, what we call virtual communion. And that means that take it, believing you're taking it, all right? Uh, it's the heart of the matter. It's not the, the substance that necessarily counts, but it's your heart before Jesus. And we are going to ask Pastor Margaret and her beautiful daughter to lead us in communion and i've asked pastor margaret to share briefly and she's going to lead us in celebrating the lord's death celebrating the lord's resurrection in jesus name amen over to you pastor margaret and marika thanks warwick and uh well we just thank you father with thank you lord it's such an honor that we can partake of communion together and father i thank you as we looking at Easter coming up just around the corner and uh, Father, your death, burial and resurrection and that we're looking at our nation at this time, Father. And we just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you lead us. I see the video. You lead us, you guide us, you show us in this time as we partake together for this great nation, Father, that we govern in the spirit in this season and we're coming into this prayer and fasting time in our nation father that we take back the heavenlies and father we just thank you lord jesus that your the bread represents your body and we just thank you as we hold it up and we thank you that every whiplash on your back that we can look right through that cross lord that you took us right into the throne room the day we gave our heart to Christ. And, Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We just thank you, even people watching who are needing healing or needing something in their life in this time, emotionally, physically, Father. I just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your body. That was those whiplash represented every sickness, every disease, every infirmity. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, as we partake. And, Lord, we thank you did that great exchange. You paid the price for us. You took every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every lack, every disease. We just thank you for it. Let's partake of the bread. Let's eat the bread together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And, Lord, we thank you as we take of uh, your blood, whatever we're taking of represents your blood, our covenant, our covenant of righteousness. You made us righteous by grace through faith. That's why you took us through the cross. 
You took us and we seated with you. Father, we just thank you. What a privilege, what an honor. That's our position, Lord, where we pray from, where we stand in this time as brothers and sisters in Christ. And we come into unity in this as covenant brothers and sisters in Christ through your blood. And we just thank you, Lord, to wiped every sin away. And Father, we thank you as we're here taking together that we call this nation to repentance, that the hearts of the people turn back to you. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. And as we're looking at Easter, that so many people come to Christ in this Easter, that souls come together and all over this nation, Father. We just thank you for your healing mercies. We thank you for your forgiveness. Oh, your grace, Father, we just thank you. You've given us abundance of grace and gift of righteousness. We thank you as we can partake of your blood as covenant sisters and brothers in Christ. We can do it here and one day we'll sit in heaven together. And we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's take the cup in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Is there anything you'd like to uh, share with us in particular tonight, Pastor Margaret, as we finish this, this time? Anything you wanted to um, to bring to well, our I think, attention? Uh, Warwick, just as the Lord gave us, I think, in that last election, and he woke me at four o'clock in the one morning just out from the election and showed us to go into 21 days of prayer and fasting. I feel it's so important in this in this time for us to... He wants us to govern spiritually, to know the power and the authority that he has given to us, uh, that we govern from above, we're not beneath. Uh, and I think it's so important that we can stand together. And we do have a godly man at the top. God put him there. He even knows that. And uh, I just think also as we're praying for, for this um, election, we need to look at internationally too. Who would be best? Because we look at the world the way it is. We look from a political side, but we pray from a spiritual side. We govern in the spirit. And it's so important for our aligning with Israel, what God is doing in the world today with the whole of the church. We're looking at the nations, the people make right decisions for the nations. We do have a, God, a lot of godly people at the top. I know Martin, um, mentioned a few names, but we do have Michaela Cash, we have Ben White. I know them all, they're, they're Christians, they're good Christians. Vince Conley, we've got others standing over here that are Christians standing in different areas that God's bringing Christians in, but it is the wheat and the tares. But, but I believe the power of prayer. I believe you look all through the Bible in the Old Testament, it was men and women of God that changed nations. When uh, that scripture in, in Numbers 14, 17 there, he gave me when Moses and Aaron uh, wept for their nation. God was about to wipe them out for their complaining and murmuring. You could say that about our nation in this time. And, and I think, you know, we, we do live in a blessed nation. I mean, what nations in the world would have handouts like we've had in this nation? People re don't realise and appreciate God's hand that is on this nation. And I thank God for this nation, the great South land of the Holy Spirit. But we need to look at the world. This is a lighthouse nation. And the world is looking at this nation. Even decisions are being made and people are following them in this time. And so we don't underestimate what God is doing. But our spiritual side is where we govern. We take back the hearts of the people. We bring people into that place of repent, repentance through the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit harbors to perform his word in this time. He's waiting for his church. We're not to complain. We're not to murmur. We're to get over into the answer and call things be not. Just like Abraham looked up at the stars and uh, he saw faces and God told him that he'd be the father of many nations. And, and, you know, uh, and I, you just looked, he saw faces. Where to see the love of Christ? Where to see his face and keep our eyes on him like never before? We've got the Holy Spirit. I always see it like a people walking across the Grand Canyon on a tightrope and Jesus is on the other side and that, that baluster rail 
that you hold to keep the balance. He says, don't look down. Don't look away from it, but keep looking your face at Jesus and walk across. And we walk right into him and he'll fulfill everything that he's wanting to do for our nation in this time. I believe that with all my heart. That's absolutely fantastic. Marika, you must have, you want to add anything to that? I think she did a great job of what she just said. <laughs> we just keep praying for our Prime Minister and, you know, keep speaking blessing over him because I know there's a few people trying to pull him down, but we'll just keep speaking life over him and declare the answer. And I know if we all keep standing together in unity and speaking the answer and praying the answer, we're going to see blessing on our nation and we're going to see righteous people ruling in our land as we come together. Your inspiration, my sister. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, <clears throat> David Chen, <clears throat> you're there with us tonight. Um, it, you know, Margaret had mentioned, but there is another issue that uh, we've talked about, Pastor Margaret, the whole issue that China's uh, rising up. And, uh, you know, we, um, we've got Russia and Europe, but we've got China and Southeast Asia, and right. they are trying to take over. And they're, they're certainly taking over a lot of the Pacific nations. And uh, that's why it's very important for us to pray at this time. Is that right? Yes. It's important who we have at the top to be able to look at that and with the wisdom, the revelation and the understanding how to push back that darkness. Uh, it is so important. Such a key. So it probably if I ever said there was such a key time in our nation, it's right in this season. Amen, amen. So, David Chen, you love China because you come from China, yes. originally, I mean, and we love you too, and we thank God for China, and we will pray a blessing upon China. We are believing yes. for blessings and breakthrough yes. for China. Would you like to pray for Australia, my brother? Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, we've been, we've been, uh, have the gathering, you know, every day, you know, we got three hours selling and then reading Bibles, and then that's why the preparation and then when the when the elections come, and then we'll be we'll be calling the Chinese a church to pray for Australia. <laughs> so yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. So what what do you want to play in Cantonese or Mandarin or English? <laughs> well, that's a good question. What do you think, uh, Kim? What would you feel? A bit of English, a bit of uh, Mandarin, I think. Yeah. Well, how about you? You pray in Mandarin and then translate in English for us and. We can all say uh, ni hao. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Heavenly Father, 亲爱的天父，我们感谢你，我们赞美你，谢谢你让这个亲自你拣选这个南方大地，你亲自使用这样的 pray warrior to pray for your nation. We pray for the you know all the nation. We love you know the you know we love you brother. You know we love you. You know the father. We love you everybody. And then you know we need to you know the we need to unite to together to pray in the name of Jesus. And then we pray for China. You know the revival for China. We pray for the Chinese government. We pray for the wake up of the Christian. And then so they know you know they need to you know the uh, uh, walk in the righteousness. And then we pray for Australia uh, together in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much, David. That was so beautiful. And we thank God for you. And we give praise, praise to Jesus for you and your leadership. Um, Kim, would you like to uh, close us off with a blessing in Hebrew? I will. I've got that all queued up and just need to, here we go. Just, uh, just receive this from the Lord. Yivarekeha Adonai Varish Mareka. Ya'er Adonai Panav Aleka Vihu Neka. Yisa Adonai Panav Aleka Viasem Laka Shalom Bishem Yeshua Hamashiach. And that is simply the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face, his very presence, shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his presence, his countenance upon you and give you shalom peace.